Happy Feast of the Resurrection Day. Happy Easter and the year of our Lord 2021. Welcome. I am Frida Marie, a member of the clergy team here. We're so glad you're here to, to just praise God with us. You and I, we are celebrating Easter together when so many of our fellow citizens, of our loved ones, our friends, and even family members have gone on to glory, to higher light. And so I just want to say thank you, God, and I want to say I'm grateful you're here to worship with me this morning. Let's sing together loudly. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Open for me the gates of righteousness. 
and I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first lesson is from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our second lesson is from the Gospel of Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Easter doesn't lend itself to pageant tableau the way Christmas does, with its colorful cast of characters, Mary, Joseph, three wise men, the innkeeper, the shepherds, the sheep, and a giggling host of angels. No wonder we put our children in bathrobes, smudge their faces with charcoal or glitter, and put on a show. We've made a major production of the nativity and then added flourishes of our own creation, cards, carols, garlands, and the Grinch. But Easter is entirely different. It starts in the dark, in a graveyard, with the stone rolled back from a donated tomb. Three women, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Salome, sidle in at dawn on Sunday to anoint their teacher's body for burial, too rushed on Friday by the coming Sabbath to complete their necessary ablutions. There's an earthquake in one account, quiet in some, shouting in others, confusion all around, and fear, always fear. But it's not a major production at all. And the minor attractions we've created around it, the bunnies and baskets and bonnets and eggs, have so little to do with the action that they neither add nor subtract very much. It's not really even much of a story when you come right down to it, writes Frederick Buechner. And that is, of course, the power of it. It doesn't have the ring of drama, he adds. It has the ring of truth. And so here we are this morning, sidling in as well, 
many of us weary from visiting hospitals or graves ourselves, worried about politics and pandemics, wondering about work, too much to bear, the missed opportunities, or both, tending by habit at home to relationships or systems that wound, and hoping against hope that there is light and life and love at the end of the tunnel. Long before this winter snow, I dreamt of this day's sunny glow and thought somehow my pain would pass with winter's pain and peace like grass would simply grow, but the pain's not gone. It's still as cold and hard and long as lonely pain has ever been. It cuts so deep and fear within. Long before this winter snow, I ran from pain, looked high and low for some fast way to get around its hurt and cold. I'd have found if I had looked at what was there that things don't follow fast or fair, that life goes on and times do change and grass does grow despite life's pains. Long before this winter snow, I thought that this day's sunny glow, the smiling children and growing things and flowers bright were brought by spring. Now, I know the sun does shine, that children smile, and it's from the dark, cold grime that a flower comes. It groans, yet sings, and through its pain, its peace begins. Resurrection comes when a person sees himself clearly, perhaps for the first time in his life, and he moves away from behavior that hurts others and himself, that is resurrection. When a couple long married realizes that decades of small betrayals and half-truths have transformed their once rich relationship into something dry and dead, and instead of giving up, they let something new and more honest be born, that is resurrection. When an artist dejectedly faces an empty page or pot of paint, but then allows a spark to take her imagination into some new way of seeing or shaping reality, that is resurrection. And when a scientist goes to sleep with a similarly blank page and wakes to a new equation or insight into the life of a cell or the universe, that is resurrection. Resurrection comes, not always when we pray for it or desire it, not always as we ask for it or expect it, not always how we think it should appear, but it comes wherever we are. God is always running towards us. Some would have us cynical and disappointed most of the time angry that in the midst of life, there's death. But Jesus tells another story. He says, in defeat and disappointment, even in dying, there is more life. Not necessarily more days, not necessarily easy solutions, not necessarily power or credit or cure, but always more life. When Mary Magdalene and the other women stole through the streets at daybreak on the way to the tomb, all they expected was death. They planned to wash Jesus' body, which had been hastily dragged from the cross before sundown, and they brought oil and spices for their work. Mary Magdalene had been somebody when Jesus was around. She was no longer called a sinner or made the subject of people's gossip. The others began to look her in the eye instead of down their noses at her. The teacher, Jesus, saw in Mary her essential self, and that helped her feel strong and whole. But this morning, 
Mary was like a corpse on her way to take care of somebody else who was dead, sure of nothing now, except that she had lost everything. Again. Then, as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Then Mary left with her friends, and later she ran right into the arms of the living God. But no one believed her. How could someone like Mary Magdalene have such good news to tell? The leaders, the disciples, grumbled merrily, true to form. Even on Easter Sunday, they sink to judgment and selfishness, probably out of fear, and we know something about that, too. But Mary is the point. This condemned and excluded one who runs to God because she realized that God has been running to find her all this time. And that is resurrection. 25 years ago, Kelly Klum pulled up to the front of the church she served as pastor, Goshen United Methodist Church in Piedmont, Alabama. She and her two daughters, Hannah and Sarah, climbed out of the car and went into the church to begin a rehearsal for the Palm Sunday Passion. In the middle of their rehearsal, a powerful storm erupted and a tornado hit the church head on. In a matter of seconds, the church was turned to rubble. In the eerie silence that followed, Kelly realized that the roof of the church had caved in on everybody there. Hannah, four years old, who only minutes before had been standing a few feet away from her mother, was now nowhere to be seen. Frantic, Kelly began digging through the debris and found Hannah's foot protruding at an odd angle cold. They got the little girl out and a rescue worker took her away. Kelly's husband, Dale, left work and met their daughter at the hospital. Minutes later, Kelly turned to find Sarah, who was shaken but okay, escaping with only minor scratches. The next hour or so passed in a blur of looking for others until Dale got through to Kelly. Hannah didn't make it he said. That night, 20 people died in the church and 86 more were seriously wounded. And this all happened leading up to Palm Sunday. Most of Holy Week was filled with funerals of friends and family, including Hannah's gathering at borrowed churches across town. Kelly later said that as she lay in bed that week, bone tired and emotionally numb, she was sure that Goshen Church was gone. It must have been buried with the rest of them. But as Saturday approached, the phone began to ring. Would there be an Easter service at Goshen Church? People asked. Should we gather? Could we? Kelly seized some energy from somewhere and said, Yes, we'll have a sunrise service at Goshen Church in the midst of the broken mess, she told them. We'll be there on Sunday, waiting for Easter. That morning at dawn, Kelly assembled in darkness with 200 people beside what was left of the building. In the center of the property where the altar would have been, someone took two ceiling joists and nailed together a cross. At around seven, the sun spilled over the horizon in colors of purple and pink, which her sister noted were Hannah's favorite. With her face swollen, her heart broken, and her shoulder in a brace, Kelly looked out at all the faces there and said, I can't think of any place I'd rather be. Can you? Then she opened the Bible and began to read. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? 
to a hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No. In all these things we're made more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that was sermon enough. I can't explain the resurrection, but I'm a witness to it. Look at Mary Magdalene. Look at that mama in Piedmont, Alabama. Look at your family in recovery. Look at the scientists who willed a vaccine into existence in months. Look at the folks waking up to their racism and turning from their death dealing ways. Look at the legislation that cuts child poverty in half. Look at a church that says all people are worthy, whatever your color, wherever you live, whoever you fall in love with, and however much you have or don't have. Look, the tomb is empty. He is risen. Look, the word has become flesh again and moved into your neighborhood from Galilee to Gaithersburg and every town in between. And in your precious heart, God has found herself a home right smack in the middle of our lives where we know we're tired and we feared we were done. Our strengthening voices have found their Easter song. Alleluia. 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 The Lord is with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Father, we pray for your Holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all peoples. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or distress, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. God, our Father, by raising Christ, your Son, you conquered the power of death 
and open for us the way of eternal life. Let our celebration today raise us up and renew our lives by the Spirit who lives within us. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May Almighty God, who has raised us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of every blessing and the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forever. Amen.